Welcome in to the Sports Card Breakdown. I'm your host, Mike Bassick, former big league pitcher and sports card collector. And I'm here to talk about my favorite player, maybe your favorite player, Luka Doncic. Is now the right time to buy Luka? I believe so. If you know what Luka's prices were and what they are now, they've gone down a lot. I'm going to go to the chart and we're going to check this out. Luke is obviously on a team that I love, the Dallas Mavericks, and they're not a very good team. You know, I'm going to give you some insight. If you're kind of a more of a, a national person and don't know much about the Mavericks, they're my team. I watch every second of every game, watch a lot of NBA. He has a well below average team he's playing with. I'll get into Trey Young a little bit in this episode too. But looking at Trey Young, Trey Young has a very good team around him. Trey Young is the best player on that team. Trey Young is great. But you have to have something around you if you want to succeed. LeBron couldn't succeed early in Cleveland. Michael Jordan couldn't succeed early in Chicago. And Luka's not going to be able to succeed in Dallas if they keep this team. And now there's all the turmoil because no more Rick Carlisle, no more Donnie Nelson. Uh, where's the organization going? Not 100% sure right now, but it's going to be run probably 100% by Mark Cuban. That scares the death out of me because he's not a lifer basketball guy. He's not putting his life into basketball. He has all kinds of areas that he loves, including Dallas Mavericks and NBA basketball. But we're talking about people who run basketball organizations. They wake up basketball, they go to bed basketball, and all the time they were awake was basketball. Mark's not doing that. You can be successful that way. It's just a lot tougher. And that's Lucas' team, probably signing the Supermax. His cards have gone way down, and I kind of get it, but I also kind of don't. Let's go to sportscardinvestor.com. This is where I get all my information. When people are asking me, how do you know how much cards are worth? How do you know what they were worth? How do I know what to sell them for? eBay is a great place to go to. You can go to completed items, sold items, and then you find out what have they recently been selling for. That's a great way to do it. Another way too, where it's really charted out over years of time is on your sportscardinvestor.com place. This does cost money. I pay money to have the market movers in sportscardinvestor.com, but to me, it's well worth it. If you're spending money on cards and if you're trying to make some profit off of cards, it's a good idea to know, am I paying way too much? Or am I getting a good bargain? Am I paying a fair price on these cards? Let's go and let's look at Luca's three major rookie cards and what they have done from pretty much the start of the season to what we have today. Okay, so I'm in my market movers uh, here, uh, sportscardinvestor.com. And as you can see over here, player, type in Luka Doncic, then the sets, the three major cards of his rookie cards, the optic, the prism, and the select. There's a whole bunch more rookie cards, but we're just looking at pretty much his three most popular cards right now, all in PSA 10. PSA 9, I've talked about this before. I love collecting PSA 9s too. I know a lot of people don't. I do, but his PSA 9 chart is going to look very similar to this PSA 10 chart. Let's go to the start of the year, January 1st, the basketball season is pretty darn new. The Mavericks had just played the Lakers on Christmas Day, and we see the prices of his three major cards here. His Prism, most popular, at $1,735. When we look at his Select, it's a little over $1,000, and when we look at his Optic, it is at $717. Now, they go up a little bit as he has a pretty good start to the season. And as we keep progressing, you can see the chart here, they just keep going down and down and down. I'm gonna go to the end here just to show you this market movers and how fun this is to see also the percentage of what it goes down to. We know the price, but the percentage. The Prism PSA 10 has gone down since January 1st, 58%, 58% from when this season started, remember, Luca made first team all NBA. So when they picked who are the five best players of this NBA season, yes, Jokic won the MVP. 
Luca finished, I believe, fourth in MVP voting, and he made first team All NBA for the second year in a row at 22 years old. Part of the season he was 21, he ended the season at 22 years old. So at 20, 21 years old, first team All NBA. 21, 22 years old, another first team NBA. So three years in the NBA, rookie of the year. All-NBA first team, All-NBA first team, and during this season, his card goes down 58%. His most popular one, his select, goes down 41%. It's now under $500. By the way, the Prism is now about $750 approximately. And then we go to his Optic, which is now $387. That is a 47% drop in price from the start of the basketball season. Now, another thing that I like to look at here, which is very important, is the population reports. So when we go to the optic, right now there are 4,099 PSA 10s. That's quite a bit, okay? That's not a low number. That means uh, they're still getting graded too at PSA. So you're probably looking at, let's just say another thousand are gonna be graded 10s. There's probably going to be 5,010 Optic PSA 10 uh, Luka Doncic cards there, which is a pretty good number. That's a pretty high number. It's not a very rare card. The one that has really gone down in price, and I think mostly because of population report, some of it because cards are going down right now, is 17,203 Prism already PSA 10s. And remember, BGS 9.5 is not worth as much, about 30 to 40% less than a PSA 10, but there's quite a few BGS 9.5s and even some uh, BGS 10s, which are much tougher to get than PSA 10s. So you're looking at a big number there, and that is why that card has gone from $1,700 to $750 in the 2021 season. And then your select concourse, there's three different cards. I don't want to get too technical here. But his base card in select, he has three cards in the set, but this is his most popular one or the one that they made the most of. The other ones are short printed. This one is at 1474 for the population report of PSA 10s. And that one has gone down considerably from $1,000 to now under $500. And when you look at just population reports, this is where sometimes you don't understand why things are popular. I don't understand everything. Prism I get is most popular, but it's the most expensive by far when there's 17,000 plus of those. And I don't think it's a much prettier card. I don't think, wow, it's just more beautiful. It just became the popular card uh, over time when uh, Panini started making basketball cards in 2012. Eventually it became the most popular, best one for I don't know what reason, but they've printed five times more than the select, yet it is two times more than the select price. Now, when I'm talking Luca here, I have a lot of cards of Luca, and I'm gonna tell you, I was really lucky. Because I'm a Dallas Maverick fan, because I'm a card fan, I was buying Lucas when they came out. So when Prism came out and you were buying them on eBay, I bought 13 of them for approximately 12 to 15 dollars a piece obviously you look at oh my god yeah when those came out those were about 12 to 15 dollars this was obviously before covid obviously before the craziness of what has happened in sports cards and especially basketball cards the optics i were buying for about seven dollars a piece and the selects i was buying for about ten dollars a piece uh when they came out so i have not a lot of them i have uh four or five select and I have about 10 to 15 uh, optics that I bought a long time ago. I have bought a few recently uh, and they've gone down. So if you've bought recently, you know that the cards have gone down, but I've bought them graded uh, and I have quite a few at PSA right now, uh, hopefully getting graded and getting back to me, uh, hopefully before 2022. If you deal with PSA, you know that it's going to take a long time right now to get your cards back. Now, you have to decide this for yourself. I'm telling you, I think it's a great time to buy Luka Doncic cards, but this is always your decision. Do you think that his cards are going to keep going down because they were way overpriced or the population of these cards are way too much and they're gonna keep going down? Or do you think, well, he got eliminated from the playoffs. 
Dallas Mavericks aren't really getting talked about in a positive way right now. It's a very negative way with the athletic report that came out uh, that there is turmoil, there's chaos, and then a couple days later, Donnie Nelson uh, gets fired slash resigns, mutual agreement, then Rick Carlisle resigns. As I talk right now, there's no general manager, there's no coach, so there's a lot of what in the world is going on with the Dallas Mavericks. So maybe his cards still have a little bit more ways to go down. But I think they're going to flatten out about right now. He's a first-team All-NBA guy. Here's a great stat for you. The other night, Trey Young goes for 48-11. and 11. Unbelievable game in game one against the Milwaukee Bucks. That's his first 40-10 and 10 game. That's amazing. And Trey Young is great. And I'm going to talk about him in a second. Luka's already done that five times in 13 games. Five times in 13 games. Part of that is because his teammates are bad. I mean, I, I'm, I'm an honest person here. It's my opinion. Luca's teammates are bad, not people, great people, but bad basketball players in general. He's playing with a bad supporting cast. So he does have to try to get 40 and 10 on a nightly basis against so far just the Clippers in his 13 games played in the playoffs. Five out of 13. LeBron James, remember everybody talks about how bad LeBron James's teams were, especially his first run in Cleveland. And he had to do a lot of work to get them to the NBA Finals and advance further in the playoffs than Luka has, obviously, so far by taking Cleveland to quite a few finals before going to Miami and winning championships. And we know the story, Cleveland and L.A. He's played in 266 playoff games, 13 to 266. 13 is the magic number for LeBron James. In his 266 playoff games he's played in, he's gone for 40 points and 10 assists 13 times. Luka's done it five times in 13 games. 13 and 266, five and 13. And as we sit here, Trey Young, who I love, great player, not Luka. He's not in Luka's category, but he is great. He's going to be an all-star in this league for a long time. He's done it now once. Maybe he'll keep doing it against Milwaukee. Maybe he'll win the NBA championship. Uh, but right now, Luka is doing things that really very few to nobody have seen people do. And his cards are going down. And I get why they've gone down, but... I do think this is a good time to buy. If you didn't want to get into Luca in January, February, March, when his cards were staying around the prices we just talked about, they've dropped 50%. I think it's a good time to buy. I think they're going to flatten out. Who knows what the Mavs are going to do in the offseason if they're going to bring KP back. I hope they don't. I hope they try to make a lot of changes around him. But if they do make a lot of changes around him, we see this in the card world. Cards start going up when teams start making transactions. There's a rumor that maybe Jason Kidd is going to be the next coach of the Dallas Mavericks. I think that'll pump the Dallas Mavericks up a little bit if that happens. I think it's going to be Jamal Mosley. He's the assistant coach, lead assistant for Rick Carlisle on the Mavericks. I think Michael Finley is going to become the general manager. So maybe that doesn't pump a lot of energy into the 2021-2022 Dallas Mavericks. But Luka is going to be first team All-NBA. Who knows what he does in the Olympics? I, I don't think Slovenia has much of a team, but can you imagine if he wins the silver medal or if they win the bronze medal? I can't imagine they could compete or beat uh, the United States, but can you imagine if he does that? Could that pump up his cards in late July and early August if he makes a run in the Olympics by scoring 40 a night in the Olympics and winning some games maybe they're not supposed to win? So I like Luca a lot. I think that this is a good time to buy. I do think his cards will be on the rise as we get to October, November, as we get to the next season. I think you have pretty much July and August and maybe even September, where his cards are going to be pretty flat, and then I could see those cards go up. And I don't know if they're going to get back to where they were because the population reports are so much. But I do think they are going to go up. I think we are hitting the lowest of lows of Luca's card career. I think they're going to go up. Now, I'm going to transition because I've been talking about Trey Young. I've been talking about Luca. I'm going to give you something that I think is a great buy. I'm going to be honest. I kind of don't like doing this because it's giving away stuff that I'm looking at and stuff that I'm going to possibly be buying here now and in the near, near future. I'm going to go to another chart here on Market Movers and show you my favorite card right now. And that is the 2018 Mosaic rookies of Trey Young and of Luka Doncic. Remember the population reports I just gave you? Trey Young's population reports on his prism and select and optic are a little bit lower 
than Luca, but everybody wanted to send in Luca as fast as they could because as great as he is. But Trey Young's population reports are very similar. They're very high in prism, a little bit lower, obviously, in select and optic. Here is mosaic. Now, I pulled up PSA 9 and PSA 10 just to show you that it's about a 50-50 if you're going to get a 10 or a 9 if you get this card crisp and clean, whether you got it out of a pack. And then, obviously, hopefully, you just put it in a nice soft sleeve and a top loader and left it alone. It should get a 9 or a 10 when you look at population reports. Population report on Trey Young PSA 9 is 247 total. 247 PSA 9s. Now this card has stayed pretty darn flat from January 1st, if you look up here, January 1st till the current date that I'm filming this on. And right now, I've been looking at this card, it is at approximately $150. Maybe you can get it a little bit less. It might kind of creep up here pretty soon if he keeps winning in the Eastern Conference Finals. Well, that's 247 in PSA 9. How about when I go to the other card of his, PSA 10? That's the card you want, PSA 10, awesome. It's gonna cost you more, 240. So we haven't even had 500 mosaic cards graded of his base. There's other colors of it. I don't wanna get into the other colors right now. 240 PSA 10s, and that card is selling for about $350 right now. And as I speak, I bet by the time you see this, I bet that card's 400 to $450. Just my guess on what he's going to keep doing in the playoffs. I go to Luca. Remember, I gave you all the population reports on his three most popular cards. Mosaic is a great card. In fact, I think this is the prettiest card out of Optic Select, Prism, and Mosaic. To me, the Mosaic card on Trey Young, on Luca, is way better looking. To me, just my eyes, I think it's better looking and way less of a print run. PSA 10 population for Luca, 452. That's your blue line right there as it lights up. And that card has been almost 1,500. It got to a high point, if I can get the mouse right here, a high point of $3,000 was its highest point on March 6th on how much it sold for. And right now, as that card is trended down, the last sale that we have of that is $910. I think that's a great buy. This card is never gonna go over 1,000 PSA 10 pop, okay? Let's just say there's another 450 of those, people have been sending in their Lucas left and right. There's not like zillions of them out there of this mosaic. So let's just say the population reports double from this. That probably still doesn't even get to a thousand PSA 10s of those. And then when you go to the PSA 9, just to give you an idea of how tough it is to get a 10, not that tough, 236 PSA 9s. So you have a pretty good chance of getting a 10 if you bought it raw and you feel like it is greatly centered, edges, corners look clean, there's no scratches on the card. That card started off in January at $1,000. As the season progressed, and you know he had a bad season, first team all NBA, fourth in MVP voting, that card, $300 right now. From 1,000 to 300, population report, 236. PSA 10, 452 as I speak. Guys, the mosaic is the thing to buy. That's what I'm going to start investing in when it comes to 2018 and before. 2018, you gotta check the population reports. That's very important when you're looking and investing in cards is how many are there out there? And that'll give you an idea. And I think this mosaic, I wouldn't be surprised if a year or two from now, the mosaic is the most expensive base rookie card of Trey Young and Luka Doncic and DeAndre Ayton and Shea Gilgis Alexander, what a great draft class, right? And when you look at that Michael Porter Jr., that this will be the best card to get because it's a beautiful card and they printed way less than they printed of Prism, Select, and Optic. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sports Card Breakdown. I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me.